In this video, we're going to be connecting the timing belts for Dexter. To start, you're going to put your small metal GT2 pulleys on your stepper motors. Place one on each stepper motor with the thick side facing the motor. Don't tighten the set screws inside the pulley yet as they need to be aligned. To align the left pulley from the front, take a belt and match it up with the teeth on the pulley. With the belt, match up the pulley to the position of the top belt director on that side. Once they're straight, rotate the pulley so that one of the set screws is matched up with the flat side of the shaft. Then tighten both set screws down. Now, we're going to align the other pulley. Take a belt and just align it as you did before with the front belt director on that side. Like the last pulley, tighten one screw down on the flat side of the shaft of the motor. After that, we can work with our belts. Take a 106cm by 6mm GT2 timing belt and run the belt up so that it is sticking out of the top belt director while going through the notch. Then feed it through the slot under the belt director pulley and pull it out the other side. Once it's fed through, it wraps around the back pulley on top. Now we can create our belt loops. One thing that is very important to remember is to keep the Kevlar section in the middle of the belt to allow for even distances of movement on either side. To start, you need to create a loop on each end of the belt for the Kevlar to go through. Fold one end of the belt back so about 5 to 7 notches from the belt are shown on the back side. Do this with both sides and cut down if there is not a few centimeters gap. Now take your thin Kevlar string and make a loop. Tighten it at the bottom of your belt loop and wrap each side of the excess Kevlar after cutting around three times. Then make another loop and tie it off. Put some super glue on the Kevlar and cut the excess string off. Repeat this for the other side. When both of those are finished, place the gap in the middle of the belt and start threading some thick Kevlar through the loops. Send the end through three times until you end up with the thread on the same side of the belt. Then pull them away from each other to get tightness. Feel the belt and make sure it has a little bit of flex, but you shouldn't be able to touch the belt to itself with ease. Don't make it so tight that it bends the steel rod either. Then make a suture knot and tie it off. If you don't know how to make a suture knot, there are plenty of tutorials online. Put some super glue onto the Kevlar. Don't get any in the belt loops in case you need to rebelt later. Snip the excess Kevlar off. Repeat this process following the same rules for the other pulley on the motor with the 103cm by 6mm GT2 belt. After that, Take your two 122cm by 9mm GT2 belts and press the teeth into the bottom area of the new belt pulley. Turn the end arm so that the belts go under the strakes and come out the other side. Now hold the end of the belts very tightly in place and turn your end arm backwards, letting the teeth on the belt skip over the pulley. Pull the belt through until the end is in the middle of the pulley and the external gear when the end arm is completely vertical. Feed the bottom section between the gaps in the arm body and under the two stepper motors. Repeat the previous belting strategy from before with both belts keeping the Kevlar loop on the same side. The difference here is you want to feel resistance when attempting to touch the carbon fiber tube by squeezing the belts. Now we will belt the two belts we put in while building the end arm hub. Follow the same rules keeping the Kevlar link in the middle of the belt and making sure not to put too much pressure on the rod. The difference with these is you want the Kevlar links to be on opposite sides from each other. Once you've done these, you've completed the belting process. 